In this video, I'm gonna talk about Spyro Reignited Trilogy. This is basically a straight copy of all three original Spyro games that came out on the PlayStation 1, and everything has been reproduced faithfully down to the last pixel. This way, you can gaze at every character in the same photorealistic glory that they used to have on the original. At the center of your adventure is the titular Spyro, a purple dragon who handles exactly like a shopping cart. You are capable of breathing fire, jumping and gliding. You are also capable of charging, a maneuver with the minor side effect of sending you careening off the edge of the level. And finally, you can perform side rolls, which have literally no use aside from giving your controller's shoulder buttons a supposed purpose in life. You are given a limited number of lives, but it is not difficult to get this count well into the double digits. That said, there are some sections onto which you will easily lose upwards of 10 lives, and possibly your controller if you throw it hard enough. This is balanced by these sections being fairly rare, to the tune of about 2 or 3 per Spyro installment. Some specific challenges also forego the concept of lives entirely, in the expectation that you will fail it multiple times. Each level is given a precise formula that is repeated as often as the art department could come up with new design themes. You have to find all the gems and collect the collectibles of the moment. Optionally, you can perform a specific challenge for your Steam achievements or to unlock a gallery of varied Spyro artwork. Interestingly, the achievements do not have the same requirements as the art gallery unlocks. This makes for enough content for about 50 hours of gameplay. Spyro 1 sticks to the basic formula and little more, while Spyro 2 introduces challenges for collectibles, such as beating enemies in a set time, finding hidden objects, or performing a short section where the game mechanics are completely different. On top of that, Spyro 3 includes sections where you play a different character altogether, all of whom are easier to handle than Spyro himself. In the grand scheme of things, Spyro 1 can be seen as a gigantic tutorial that teaches the basics of the game, Spyro 2 puts these lessons into application, and Spyro 3 explores outside of the box to vary the experience. The challenge is more in finding all the collectibles, and less into fighting the enemies. You will lose far more lives from dropping off the map than from getting hit by the various monsters peppering each level. By the way, you are not going insane, Gulp is that difficult of a boss. He leads his targets, he can use your healing items, and he takes a ridiculous number of hits before going down. That box is a sucker kick in the nuts after the franchise has been tenderly caressing your cheek for one game and a half. Also, one of the challenges is to kill him without getting hit. Go ahead, I will wait. The weird part in all of this is that this is a game that was made for you as a young teenager. Now that it is released once more, it is being played by you as an adult with a job and bills to pay. The idea of spending hours upon hours repeating levels and mastering a game until I can play it by heart has become an alien concept. I never had a PlayStation and therefore skipped the entire chapter about nostalgia. The end result is an experience that bizarrely has a little too much bullshit for a weekday warrior and a little too few for a middle school kid. Most will understand it as hours of brainless entertainment and 15 minutes of raging panic. It feels like wasted time and not wasted time at the same time. It feels satisfying yet inefficient. The levels were played, the fun was had, but there are, somehow, pangs of hunger that keep on insisting well after I have put the controller down. In short, this game is a joint. Oh,